Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Let's Play, where things are already on fire. And I do mean that quite literally, as Pascal over here has been set ablaze by the Chaplain's Holy Flamer, causing some unholy damage over here as far as I'm concerned. That is 10 burning damage per turn, and with 18 HP to his name, that means Pascal will only live for two turns unless we do something about it. Beyond this fiery situation over here, there are some other let's call them concerning circumstances as far as this battle scenario is concerned. First of all, if we take a peek down over here, we'll see that uh, First Mate Dagon, doing his little jig over here, has a chain sword and a ton of HP. Beyond that, we have a combat servitor over here with a ton of HP and I'm sure a ton of armor as well, which is particularly concerning as he stands next to pretty much all of our crew. Separately, down over here, we'll find Cass Bellardo. Not as much HP, but he seems to have some fancy equipment, while further up top over here we'll see a clerk with 39 HP and uh, some more ceremony guests with 32 HP and uh, and 8 HP across the board. Now, again, some of these guys don't look so threatening, but that is a lot of HP we have to burn through, while at the same time, we don't have too much to our names. Remember, we took a fair bit of damage last session outside of combat, and it did not all get healed up, so we're very much on the back foot. But I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be just fine, folks. Just want to mention really quickly, if you've been enjoying this series, if you would like to see it continue, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, just lets me know what people are enjoying on the channel, what I should keep doing, what I should speed up, slow down, etc., etc. I'm sure you're familiar with the drill by now. Separately as well, folks, if you've been enjoying this series and you haven't yet subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing because there's a lot more Rogue Trader to happen over here alongside a lot more you know, turn-based tactical combat games, RPG games, and stuff like that. That's sort of the bread and butter of this channel, alongside strategy gaming, management gaming, and uh, sim gaming. So if that stuff is uh, to your liking, you might want to consider subscribing, and you also might want to consider joining the Discord, linked in the description down below. It's a great place to hang out with some great people, including massive fans of Warhammer, whether that's Fantasy Battles or 40k. With all that said, Pascal, let's go ahead and I think pull you back and try and cause some damage to the ceremony guest and chaplain over here. The chaplain doesn't move until the top of the next turn, but if I can, you know, chip his health down a little bit, I'll feel a lot better. And then once we pull back and uh, and pop a shot, we'll try and heal ourselves with the Medicaid Mechadendrite, which should um, bring us back to full health. Unless uh, something goes horribly wrong over here, there shouldn't be like a, a roll or anything involved. So that should be all we need, though part of me is tempted to wait for a bit more fire damage to, to settle in uh, before we use the, uh, the, the Mechadendrite. But what else am I going to do with these action points? So let's pull on back to uh, shore here, I suppose, and get the Plasma Overcharge AoE damage uh, in this pool over here. It should work well enough for us. And then we can, yes, use the Mechadendrites to keep ourselves alive. Though I wonder... Ooh... Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Pascal has a crack grenade, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with the world, crack grenades are uh, ideal for use against armored pieces of equipment, such as a combat servitor, whereas frag grenades are used for piercing through flesh instead. You know, people, aliens, whatever it might be, if they're unarmored, you want to use frag grenades. If they're armored, or if they are, are armored themselves, like a tank, you want to use crack grenades. So can I, from this position, no, I don't have reach, but maybe the turn after. All right, okay, so yeah, let's move as close as we can move, and let's go ahead and turn around and pop this uh, plasma overcharge over here, cause some damage, and then we'll stick with the uh, Medicaid Mechadendrite to keep ourselves alive. Oh, wow! Oh, that was awesome. This guy got split in half. That's not a... That, that T-pose does not uh, express dominance, but uh, this guy got blown back. That Righteous Fury did so much there. Down to 5 HP. That is absolutely huge. We might be able to eliminate him much sooner than I'd expected. As back over here, let's go ahead and pop, yes, the Medicaid Mechadendrite to keep ourselves alive and well. And to, it looks like, get rid of the burning status effect as well. Let me just take a quick look at the character sheet. Yeah, that's great. Doesn't mention it on the actual uh, skill, but you know what? I will absolutely take it as we, uh, I think, hit the end turn button for Pascal and move on to a ceremony guest. Okay, the enemy moves next. They're probably going to get some shots in. Oh, on Pascal. He should be okay. Two damage from Righteous Fury. Otherwise, he is, uh, well, he's, he's, he's made of metal. Dude's fine. Pascal is fine unless something a bit more heavy hitting comes our way as Idira needs to make a move now. We do have the Lightning Arc ability that can cause a fair bit of damage in clumps. I wonder, I wonder... Hmm. If I creep up to, like, here and expose ourselves, I could use the lightning arc to maybe eliminate uh, all these guys separately. 
If I try and pull a shot from back over here, I could maybe get the chaplain with a precision shot. 76% chance to hit. That's not terrible. That's not terrible, but I can't do both. I cannot do both. I think since the chaplain doesn't move until next turn, we're, we're better off using the lightning arc to minimize damage output from this clump over here. And maybe if I get lucky with uh, Righteous Fury, we'll kill Cass Bellardo as well, all in, uh, in, in one move. But is that the best spot to stand? Maybe next turn we can use, like, or, or with some other character, we can use move, move, move or something to uh, to get back into safety. That's uh, that's an option for sure. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and pop this. Lightning arc down over here. Get the job done, hopefully. Come on, baby. Let's get to it. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Killed both of these guys, but Caspilardo only took 11 damage. That's fine. We are able to uh, do nothing else, really, unless we pop our onslaught over here to get movement points without draining somebody else's action points. You know what? Yeah, it's an item consumed, but I think now's the time to do it. Let's go ahead and uh, pop that and get our movement to pull back, I think, into the safety of cover over here, but also stay close enough to pop shots next turn, or maybe with a bring it down, we can fire at the chaplain or something like that. Sure, Adira, let's go ahead and uh, pull on back and take cover over here. Should be okay. End our turn there. Looks like a few ceremony guests are going to move next, but he's going to come up and... Oh! Cause some damage to Argenta. Meanwhile, down over here, this clerk is going to do what? Nothing? Okay, interesting. Oh, he's firing at Piscal. Yes. A little bit of damage. Not that bad. M40 auto gun. Okay. Oh. The Avalar took zero damage there, so that's excellent. And perhaps these two can take care of the ceremony guests. They do have, I think, the equipment for it. But it is Cassia's turn now, and she has Lidless Stare, which could perhaps eliminate uh, a few of these people. The, the the cone on that is massive. But we also have uh, Bring It Down, which Adira could be uh, could be used to, 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 again, hit that chaplain, right? Maybe that's the right call. I thought she had Line of Sight there, so sure. Bring It Down. Adira, you first. Get the job done, maybe. Again, we can't use Precision Strike, unfortunately. Just a single shot. Though we do have uh, this Precision Strike available to us, actually. I suppose I could try that. What does that give us? Oh, no line of sight? Wait, hang on a second. I thought I had line of sight. I do, but not with uh, not with this Precision Strike. Interesting. Oh, he has to be studied first. Ah, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and hope for the best with a 46% chance to hit. Come on. Of course. Oh, of course. I'm not surprised about the miss, but that's okay. We took our shot, literally. Cassia, if we pull you out to here and expose you a little bit, that little stair should have a decent angle across the board, and we should be able to kill at least these two guests and cause a bit of damage to Dagon as well. Let's, uh... Let's go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. Pop that. And see what we can do over here. Good stuff, good stuff. Not bad. Actually managed to kill both these guys as expected. And a fair bit of damage, yeah, on Dagon. Cool. Like it. Let's go ahead and end our turn there. And it'll be who next? A couple of ceremony guests and then Cass Bellardo. All right. Let's see what they get up to. 32 HP on this guy. Absolutely ridiculous. Popping shots at Pascal. Pascal's going to be... Wow, not okay. I was talking too much smack earlier, I guess. And meanwhile, Cass is up over here using Get Back in the Fight on Dagon. And Voice of Command. And... Oof. Causing a fair bit of hurt there as well. That is not good. The Rogue Trader has 9 HP. That is not good at all. Now, Avalard over here is able to use Slash. And if I move up to here and use Slash, will I hit? Yes, both of them? No, I will not. Damn! Clever placement there by the AI. If we switch to our uh, Melta gun over here, we should be able to use Melta Scorching and, and hit both of these guys. Kill Cass, do little damage to, uh, to Dagon, unfortunately. If I pull it back a bit further... No, I can't. I almost wonder if I shouldn't uh, try and sneak by these guys. Some attacks of opportunity shortly to happen. Turn around and, and open fire in the other direction. Nah, that's not going to do us any good either. Hmm. Okay, okay. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. What if we go ahead and uh, charge? I can't charge because I don't have a melee weapon. Let's get our melee weapon out. If I charge down here, we'll il almost eliminate Cass. Just not good enough. Just not good enough. Who else could take him on? I suppose the rogue trader could take him on. He's got a melee weapon as well. And, uh... Fine. Alright, let's go ahead and... <sighs> charge down over here. A little concerned about our circumstances, as you can see. Charge down over here. Try and get that hit in. Or not. I thought I saw damage output there. Fine. Let's go ahead and pop this. Forceful strike. 
And let's actually go in and strike against uh, First Mate Dagon over here. A little bit of damage done. What actually happened back there, though? Cass hit Cassia. Avalar hit... What happened to our charge? I saw damage information. Maybe I misread. Maybe that's on me. Nonetheless, Avalard's turn is done. He has one action point with which he can use superior vigilance, or perhaps we chase after Endure instead, just to keep him alive. And then we'll move on to our next character, which is Argenta. She's got a fair few options as far as equipment is concerned. Do we... Oh, I know what we're going to do here. I know what we're going to do here. All right, let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and move up to here. Should have clearer lines of fire. 60%, 40%, really? What if we stay put? What if we stay put? 60%, still 40%? Really? What's our range on this thing? 12. Do I want to be further back? Just experimenting here. Pop a shot here. 60%, 40%. Okay, must be because of their, like, other stats. Let's, let's pull up, though. We might block our other movement. We could pull up to here instead. And uh, pop our uh, military excellence. That should allow me to get a few shots off. Let's go ahead and uh, eliminate Cass Bellardo. 76% chance to hit. Come on, baby. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I was just about to say it'll take two shots, but with Righteous Fury, one and done, baby. One and done. Can we do anything to the Combat Servitor? No. That is a lot of armor he's packing, so that's not an option. We could try and hit First Mate Dagon over here. Let's go ahead and pop a shot. Come on, baby. 51% chance. Nice. That Righteous Fury is very helpful. Um, I almost wonder if I try and eliminate these guests as opposed to focus on Dagon. Okay, one, one more attempt on Dagon. But uh, if it doesn't work out, I'll say the Dice Gods have blessed us enough and we'll move on to some of these guests. Let's go ahead and fire away. Oh, come on. So close. So close. But a second Righteous Fury would be uh, would be silly. Almost. Let's go ahead and hit the, uh, the guest up over here. Down you go. Nice and easy. And one last shot. Let's go ahead and uh, chase Dagon once more. Let's do it. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Nice. Excellent. Beautiful stuff. Now, I don't think we'll need any of our other abilities or anything, so let's go ahead and end Argenta's turn there. Dagon was concerning me a little bit, so I'm glad he was taken care of rather easily. And up over here, it's the Rogue Trader's turn. Now, the Rogue Trader also has crack grenades. In fact, he has two crack grenades. Oh, this should be nice. So what if we pull you up to uh, where? Pull you back to safety? Where are shots going to be coming in from? We've got this guest up over here. He's armed with a melee weapon. Up over here, we've got a clerk, a guest, and the chaplain, all armed with ranged weapons. So half cover should be enough to keep us safe, maybe? Or I could pull pull further back, maybe. I don't know, I'm just worried because uh, very low HP over here and no way to keep himself alive. Uh, we could also take a look at uh, bring it down on uh, Argenta. And then she could pop some shots that might eliminate both of these guys. Same thing goes for Abelard, maybe. Idira could get a shot off. I don't think that's worth it. Cassie is probably not worth it either. Though, you know what? Let's not waste bring it down, because I believe I can throw two crack grenades instead. All right, let's go ahead and pull back to uh, here, or perhaps even here. Hopefully that's best. Pop one crack grenade up over here. That'll do a lot of damage, and a second one might even eliminate the, uh, the combat servitor. All right. Let's do it. Unavailable. Why not? Pull back to there. Alright, let's go for it. Glad I checked. Are you for real? Are you for real? How much worse could you have missed? Not not, not much, I reckon. And uh, actually, we can only do one attack per uh, per turn, right? So uh, no more crack grenades, and uh, that's, uh, that's not looking too hot. Let's go ahead and use Bring It Down on... Uh, who? Abelord or Argenta? Let's go with Argenta and see if uh, if her flamer doesn't do the trick. Flamer shot. At least eliminate somebody, right? <laughs> we can cause some damage to the servitor. Maybe get it burning. I highly doubt it. Oh my goodness. Worth a shot. Literally worth a shot. Let's go for it. I'll take the Righteous Fury. And uh, after Argenta's done her turn, and after uh, the Rogue Trader's done his useless turn, it's the Combat Servitor rolling on up. Oh, this is going to hurt. Wow. That wasn't good. Chaplain's going to fire away at Pascal. Going to get us on fire. Yep. It's one turn of, uh, of life left on Pascal. That's not good. But I've got some plans for him. I've got some plans for him. I think. If we can get close enough. 
Uh, or should we maybe fire at somebody else? This clerk is moving up next. We could pull back to here for some cover and then turn around and, and pop shots down over here. We have, again, the crack grenade that will hopefully not miss because we, we need that hit. That first throw was absolutely ridiculous. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, pop this over here. I, I think it's the right call. Yeah, let's go for it. Fully surrounded by enemies. Pascal might actually drop. Come on. Oh, come on, man. I can't... I can't have that keep happening. <laughs> I can't have that keep happening. Um, God damn it. Do I want to use this uh, medikit? It'll remove burning, and it'll keep us alive. The other option involves waiting until the rogue trader, and he might not live long enough to do what I need him to do. Pascal's going to get so shot up. All right, fine. Let's use the medikit. Keep ourselves alive. Come on, Pascal. Good stuff. Real shame. End the turn there, though. As the ceremony guest is going to pull up and fire away. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. Not that bad. Idira, what to do with you? We got to get away from the combat servitor. That is a very scary situation to be in. I cannot lightning arc without causing friendly fire. Uh, I could perhaps pre precision strike, sorry, the chaplain. No, he's moved into a, a safe spot. We could fire away at these guys. They've got melee weapons up over here. You got a ranged weapon. Looks like a sniper rifle as well, in fact. So I could try and pop a safe shot over here. Perhaps a precision shot instead. 63% chance to hit. But is he going to get an attack of opportunity on us? Hmm. Let's creep on up to this uh, half cover, I suppose. Make our way over. Yeah, no attack of opportunity. Good stuff. Precision strike. Up over here, 63% chance to hit. Let's uh, maybe go for it. Lightning arc is not worth it. I don't think up over there or anywhere down over here. Again, it'll cause friendly fire. Yeah, fair enough. Precision strike. Let's drop this guest. Come on. Come on. My goodness. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. It's not the end of the world. Go ahead and end our turn there. This guest is going to come up and open fire. Bit of damage there. Bit of friendly fire actually on their part. This clerk's going to fire at Pascal, it looks like, and Pascal will be just fine. That cover was a good call. And down over here, Cassia. All right, if we flip the Lidless Stair up in this general direction, we will cause a lot of friendly fire. Uh, so I think we'll have to move before we pull that trigger. If I get you back to uh, ear, let's say, and try the stair from this angle. Still a touch of friendly fire. Argenta over there in the line of fire. No way to avoid her, I don't think. What if I come up to here? Lidless Stair... Maybe that's a risk I'm willing to take. Maybe that's a risk I'm willing to take. We do have a uh, frag grenade we can pop, but that seems like a waste of items. We can eliminate these guys with a little of stare. Let's go ahead and do that. Or I could use bring it down. Get uh, get the flamer or a, or a plasma shot to get the job done. Oh my goodness. Decisions, decisions. We can do both. We could do both. Let's try. Let's try uh, bring it down first on Argenta, and then maybe we can change our, our cone of uh, of attack. Argenta, with your one AP, you can't do anything. Great. Let's go ahead and get the uh, the bolter out then. Get a shot off over here on this guest. Point blank range. Come on. Down you go, righteous fury. Love it. End our turn there. And now the little stair can be at a slightly different angle. Yes, to get the uh, combat servitor and the ceremony guest, and not any friendly fire. Good stuff. Let's do it. I'll take it. I'll take it. End the turn there. A little exposed, but hopefully uh, not going to draw too much attention. And of course, as I say that, we get shot at. Alright, Abelard. You good, buddy? Are you going to be able to pull this off? These guys are all taken care of. Who moves next? This ceremony guest up over here, and then the combat servitor. Alright, how do we do this? Do I go charging in? I can't. I don't have a clean line or anything. Fair enough. I could activate Forceful Strike just to try and knock it down, though I don't think that's very likely. Go ahead and pop it. We'll move in and uh, and we'll strike. Again, I do have the option to use our Melta gun instead. Eight penetration isn't bad. Okay, let me actually take a look at this. Maybe I should have done this instead. Yeah, that's pretty good. The uh, the forceful strike was a waste. It's okay. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. Let's go. That's not bad. 14 damage is not bad. And uh, otherwise, we stay put with Endure activated. At least we have enough action points left over for that. And we can end our turn there. Moving on to Argenta. who will maybe finish things off over here? No, seems unlikely. What about our uh, flamer over here? Will that do anything? Could do a little bit. It's better than nothing, I suppose. Or, of course, we could uh, shift up to here and maybe use our uh, our bolter up over here instead. Oh, really? No lines of fire from up over there? Really? 
up over here. Yeah, okay. Again, this guy has to close the gap to hit us, right? So we should be fine. If I do this... Yeah, sure, let's go for it. Let's try it, let's try it. Up we go, burst fire, let's do it. Nice! Oh, that guy got wrecked! That guy got absolutely destroyed, and he was actually the one I was hoping to, to, to get... Uh, to get knocked down. I did a lot more than that. Good stuff. He's not going to get back up again. Let's end Argenta's turn. This guest is going to make his way over. He's going to be able to close the gap. No. Excellent. All right, Rogue Trader, you're up. What to do with you? Go ahead and have Avalard bring it down, hopefully with another shot on the combat servitor. It'll be destroyed. Go for it with the uh, Melta Scorching over here. And maybe, maybe Righteous Fury. Come on, baby. Come on. Nice. He is a pile of bones. No metal left. It's all been melted away. My goodness. Good stuff. Avalard, great stuff. Uh, let's end our turn there. Back to the rogue trader. And who do we focus on next? The uh, chaplain is going to move soon. Probably chasing after Pascal still. Can I shoot from down over here? No line of sight. I could maybe creep up a little bit. Uh, to here maybe. And then pop a shot on the chaplain. 20% chance to hit. Is that even worth it at that point in time? Is that even worth it? Anywhere that'll give me a clearer line of sight? I don't think so. 20%. Yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. Over here, I could fire at this guy. Eliminate him, but he doesn't move for a very, very long time. So he's kind of irrelevant as far as that's concerned. Sure, let's go ahead and fire at the chaplain. 20% chance. Let's go for it. Come on, baby. Come on, show me what you got. Show me what you got. Oh. No surprise. I mean, come on. What are the chances of hitting that, actually? Uh, but I believe we can end our turn there. Nothing else we need here. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, let's end the turn there. And see what the chaplain does. Unsurprisingly coming this way, and he's going to set the rogue trader on fire, isn't he? Oh, he actually didn't do that much damage. And we're not on fire. Argenta is, but the rogue trader isn't. That's a surprise. Pascal is up next. Who do we have left? The clerk and the chaplain. The clerk and the chaplain. And of course, this guy down over here. All right, a single shot. 40%. Hmm, maybe that's good enough. I can't really uh, use our melee weapon. Single shot over here, 58%, 40%. It's like, do I worry about this clerk over here? Obviously, he moves uh, He moves before the chaplain does now, but I keep saying that, and I keep finding myself in this situation where uh, where the fire keeps causing us trouble. The rogue trader could close ranks and, and cut him down, so fine. Let's go ahead and use the uh, plasma overcharge so that if we get that hit with a 40% chance, we do more damage. I think that's the right call. I think that's the right call. Study defenses allows us to ignore dodge and parry up to a degree and absorption as well. That's not bad. If we land that hit, it'll do that much more for us, right? Don't think I'm close enough. Can I? Let's, okay, let's go ahead and move up to here because we know we want to move up to there. If I try and study defenses, I can't. Oh, it has to be in melee range. All right, fair enough. Go ahead and pop that uh, overcharge shot. See what we can do. Come on, baby. Nice. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. Otherwise, let's go ahead and uh, end our turn there. Down to Idira. Idira, what to do with you? What to do with you? This clerk goes next. So a shot up there that finishes him off would be ideal. I could pull up to here. Gives us line of sight. 53% chance to hit. That might have to be uh, acceptable. Alternatively, the lightning arc over here should hit. It won't kill him, though. It won't kill him. But I guess it's a guaranteed hit. Yeah, let's go for it. Tempt the warp a little bit. Righteous Fury? Nah, no such luck. Not surprised. Okay, not much we can do about that. Let's go ahead and uh, give ourselves uh, a hope and a prayer, perhaps? Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're fine. Come on, miss. Okay, that's not bad. Still alive. <laughs> Still alive. Cassia, you're up. What to do here? Do we get bring it down on uh, on Argenta over here? Popping shots on this guest before he can move and then popping shots of his own or her own, I should say. Maybe a good call. Cassie is pretty badly hurt as well. She has her own uh, rifle, but I don't think she's very good at shooting. 70%, 49%. Let's go ahead and uh, get bring it down on, yes, Argenta. Argenta, let's go ahead and get your uh, single shot over here. 95%, yeah, that much better. Sure, let's go for it. Get rid of the ceremony guest over here. He moves next-ish. Among the enemy, at least. Done. Argenta's extra turn is done. And now Cassia 
kind of tempting to uh, move up to here and tempt fate once more with Lidless Stare and get rid of both of these guys. Is that all that's left? Oh, that is all that's left. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get the job done with Cassia. Want to make sure I don't hit myself, obviously. Let's steer absolutely clear. And uh, fire away, so to speak. No line of sight. Oh, fine. This should do the trick then. Up we go. And down they go. My goodness. That was stressful. That was very, very stressful. But everyone's back at full HP. Argenta took just a little bit of damage at the end there because of the burning status effect. But, uh, but that was good. That was good. Look at the bloodshed, though. My goodness. I wish corpses stuck around, you know, after you left an area and came back. I would love to come back to, uh, to this corpse especially. <laughs> Alright, that was some good work. Let's go ahead and see what kind of loot these guys have and then uh, investigate the area a bit further. Again, they were offering us an opportunity to investigate stuff, but I didn't want to work with pirates. At first, I didn't know that was an option to even, uh, you know, say, no, I'm not going to work with you, but tur turns out it is. Underworld here. Failed, it says. A strange ceremony taking place in the heart of Footfall. What will happen if the rogue trader decides to join the proceedings? Uh, carnage is what's going to happen. We did not uncover Fidelio's identity. Who is the mysterious, mysterious final guest everyone is waiting for at the ceremony? The answer may be the key to understanding what is happening. I guess we decided uh, not to do that, and we couldn't in, uh, settle the inheritance question either. It is what it is. We can't do every quest, right? we got to stick to our, uh, our character. Otherwise, we're not uh, doing the role-playing part of the role-playing game, right? Let's go ahead and loot away and see what we have over here. A bunch of uh, flak armor, it seems like. I'm sure we can put most of the stuff away. We have what else over here? A las gun, not particularly special. And a bunch of regular swords, it looks like. Yeah, nothing particularly special. Let's go ahead and pack all that as cargo. And I'm sure there's more to pick up, up over here. There's a, there's, a, there's a goddamn flamer that we need, right? So, Pascal, go ahead and take a look. Look at that. Ooh. For the first time, we're actually seeing prerequisites get in the way. Now... Argenta does have flame weapon proficiency, but this allows me to uh, further expound on the rule set from the books. By the way, let me know if you don't like hearing about the uh, rule set from the books. I just like seeing how it's been kind of translated. But uh, in Rogue Trader and Dark Heresy and all the other games from that uh, from that ilk, uh, you couldn't use a weapon unless you had the uh, weapon proficiency. Some weapons, there was some carryover where you'd be able to use them at a significant penalty, but uh, but other weapons you simply couldn't use. If you, if you didn't know how to use a flame weapon, you could not use a flame weapon. Whereas if you were able to use, I'm um, making up an example here because it's so long, I don't remember the specifics, but if you were able to use a stubber, then you might be able to use a heavy stubber at a penalty because you don't have heavy weapons proficiency, but you have solid projectiles proficiency, stuff like that. So uh, kind of cool to see that that is uh, included. Um, and we have over here as well a regular sword, a sniper rifle. We already have plenty of those. Let's go ahead and pick up the... Uh, the flamer. We'll give that to Argenta if she needs a newer one, or we'll compare them. And everything else, I guess, can go into our cargo. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our inventory, yes, as we're seeking Argenta and her flamer, which I'm sure compares. It's the exact same thing. 12 to 15 and 2 pen. And uh, 12 to 15 and 2 pen. Okay, so that could have gone into cargo as well. Oh, and that reminds me, I forgot to assign the Thunder Hammer. My apologies, it slipped my mind last session. Uh, but we should assign the Thunder Hammer that we acquired, uh, I guess, two sessions ago now, right? Or was it last session? Last session, we saw it two sessions ago. This allows us to uh, potentially stun an enemy. Causes 11 to 14 damage and 7 penetration. Avalard is almost always in melee when he's not using his Melta gun. So what uh, what's the comparison over here looking like? Less damage, less penetration. Um, no, hold on, that's comparing... I don't want to compare the Melta gun. I want to compare the Chainsword. Come on, come on, have some logic here, game. It's an alpha, it's fine. 14 to 18, 2 pen, versus 12 to 15, 7 pen. So it's more about getting through, uh, through armor, which, hey, could have come in handy uh, against that combat servitor. Is this two-handed? It is two-handed, it is chainsword's one-handed, so uh, we can swing two chainswords at the same time if we want to, but not with uh, not with Buddy here. What about uh, ourselves? You know what, why don't we go ahead and get the Thunder Hammer as our second equipment set, and that way if we are up against something that has a lot of armor, we can get the uh, Thunder Hammer out, and uh, oh boy, bring the pain uh, regardless of what kind of armor they're fielding. Alright, good stuff. I think that works out for me. And do we have any other loot over here? Anything else we can interact with? No. Everyone's dead. Everyone's dead? Oh, we have something up over here can't remember exactly what we investigated versus didn't. But we'll take a look around a bit more. Oh yeah, that's the expensive Amasek. I've interacted with that like four times now. We have a citizen down over here. We got uh, nothing over here. 
I was like, that looks suspicious. Why are these purity seals up over here? But I guess they're kind of littered everywhere. Yeah, this is a a site for a right. Anything over here? This is, I mean, this looks like a elevator, but we can't do anything with it. And if we take a look at the map, we've kind of explored everything. I don't know where else we can go to actually gain access to uh, where we expect uh, Hieronymus to be, right? Let's, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't see anybody else to interact with. We've got, uh, we've investigated this, we've investigated this and that. Uh, we can try and maybe reach the servitor down there. Can't get down there. Can't, uh, no, nothing to do, nothing to do with a citizen down there, maybe. Can we reach them? I don't know how to get there. I mean, this is, it's a little chaotic, I'll be honest, with, uh, oh, hey, hello. Winter Scale Dynasty. They're the other, uh, one of the other rogue traders. They're the ones who are sort of head haunch around these parts. But yeah, the, the map is a little chaotic sometimes. It's easy, at least for me, uh, to get a little lost in it. Maybe that's just me, but uh, I certainly feel that, especially while recording. It's a bit more, uh, a bit more unsettling. Enforcer like Carapace, we have plenty of that. Arsonist's Bracers. These bracers grant the wearer a plus five bonus to tech use tests. They also increase damage from flame weapons by plus three. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, let's get them on... Uh, Maybe um, Pascal, just to help with his tech use. Otherwise, we have over here a plasma pistol. I'll pick that up. It's a decent enough weapon. The Ripper. Oh, it's a named two-handed weapon here. Six to nine damage, one penetration. That's not a lot of damage. I don't think that's actually a named uh, piece of equipment. That just sounds like it's got uh, a designation or something. And a couple of chainsaws. Regular chainsaws. We don't need these. Sure. Pack as cargo. It's funny to me packing things like chain swords away as cargo they just memories from tabletop they're like not a common item but we've picked up so many already uh, while already being at a high level so we don't even need them to begin with all right i guess we're done investigating here let's see if there's a conversation oh drusian acolyte oh, oh 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 hello how do i get up here this is what i need these guys there he is there's hieronymus how did i miss him i guess we got to go down this way and then back up. Okay, at least we found him. At least we found him. Get everybody up over here and then we can uh, speak to uh, yeah, Hieronymus. Your Holiness, Reverend Hieronymus, I have been authorized to deliver an anonymous donation to you. Who is this? It's just a runner? Oh, hang on. Let's listen in. What's going on here? Its sender is too humble to give it to you in person, but they hope that it will benefit the servants of the true faith. Go on. I don't know if there's more or uh, if they're done their conversation. We're really interrupting this guy's prayer over here. He's like trying so hard. Ooh, how impotent and vain is one who hopes to save their soul with gratuities. I mean, come on now. Are you really going to complain about uh, money to fund your mission? Well, off uh, off she goes. Yeah, the, the pace of, of text is not great. Oh my god, this <laughs> getting absolutely plastered over here. My goodness. All right, let's speak to Hieronymus and, and, and see what he's, uh, what he's all about. Select everybody. Let's go ahead and take a look at these goods first. <laughs> Pick up the machine right set, a sacred set of, sorry, a set of sacred oils and cogitograms that can appease the keeper of any technology and a bunch of common items as well. Well, I'll pick up the trophy and everything else can, uh, sure, head into cargo as we, yes, now, for real now, uh, speak to Hieronymus. The man with a face so drawn it appears to be made of nothing but skin and bone fixes his unblinking bird-like eyes on you. The priest's simple black clothes of next to no adornments, and they do nothing to mask his unhealthy gauntness. In a cracked voice, he says, The Emperor protects my son. The Emperor protects father. But he protects only those who are pure of heart. Do you think yourself one of them, my son? I mean, I served him for many, many years. I've been through hell and back. So, uh, I think I'm pure of heart. I think I've proven my purity. And you must be the young von Valencius. That name carries weight, and it is a burdensome one, for its reputation suggests that Theodora encumbered it with many a sin. I wonder, will you seek to shed them, or will you carry them onward, picking them along the way like ripe fruit and savoring their sweet poison? I like how he's written. We could use our persuasion here. Not a very high chance of success there. Oh, 100% chance of success. Oh, DC 10. Okay, the way it's listed is... Surprising to me. Fair enough. Yeah, that should be easy. We can make the sign of the Holy Aquila and say I put my faith in the Emperor. I do. I like to believe I'm a loyal servant. Yes, I put my faith in the Emperor. Oh, we failed. So that was a lie. 100% success chance. 
again, there's always room for failure, even with a 100% success chance. Um, at least that's how I recall the system being. He gives you a scrutinizing look, then says dryly, We'll see how long it lasts under the onslaught of the sinners who inhabit this sector, and who are repulsed by all things sacred and pure. He looks at Argenta, who is standing nearby, and his voice softens slightly. Greetings, sister. I congratulate you on your return. Was your pilgrimage fruitful? It was. Reverend, let it be known that to you... Sorry. Let it be known to you that Theodora von Valencius's ship was attacked by servants of Arch Enemy. Who? A malign metaphysical force comprised of psychic energy that exists in an alternate dimension. I've never seen this term used to refer to any, like, demons or anything. Maybe it's, uh... Maybe it's slipping my mind right now, but uh, that term is, is new to me, especially as a proper noun. But... Von Valencius' ship was attacked by servants of Arch Enemy, who appall the heart of any righteous soul, she says, nearly hissing with fury, and not all of them met a fitting end. Some fled, and more than that, their blasphemous words clearly pointed to this attack being part of a larger design. Interesting. Reverend Hieronymus, I wish to join the esteemed rogue trader's crew and help protect the Von Valencius dynasty from the forces of chaos. I therefore ask you to relieve me of my duties as guardian of the footfall reliquary. Argenta humbly bows her head, but her shoulders are tense. I could say I second this plea if pleading weren't beneath me. Oh, wow. I could say I second this plea. Sister Argenta stood by my side during the assault on the ship, and I could use her assistance going forward. Or I could say I have no need of Sister Argenta's escort. It seems as though we have a pretty good rapport, so I will say that I second this plea. Sister Argenta stood by my side during the assault on the ship, and I could use her assistance going forward. Now is not the time for an attitude. This is in, you know in favor of one of my friends. So, yes, I second this plea. Hieronymus nods in thought. I cannot oppose the will of a righteous heart that wishes to bring its wrath upon the servants of Archenemy. Follow the call of your soul, sister. The footfall reliquary will be preserved even without your contribution, as it was in all the years preceding your arrival. That is foreshadowing, if I've ever seen it. It has to be. Hieronymus smiles sadly. I know what it is that calls you to follow the rogue trader, Sister Argenta. You seek combat, for it helps you to forget how hollow and worthless our lives truly are. It offers the illusion of meaning. Perhaps you will relinquish this illusion one day, or perhaps you will die before that day comes. Regardless, I wish you luck on your new path. But before you start on a path toward your new destiny, I have a request to make of you and your companion. Many among my flock are from the poorest, most dispossessed people on Footfall. They've brought me troubling news from Footfall's shadow quarters. In the darkest corners, where the Liege's guards do not venture, taint has taken root. Footfall is consumed by sin. But even here, true heresy, serving the arch enemy, is a rarity. The cultists who now dwell in the shadow quarters mark their abodes with a sun inscribed in blue and gold and perform strange rituals in secret. The weak find solace in believing these reports to be rumors, but I well know that evil lurks all around us, and I wish to see retribution. Are we about to see Zinch? I would be so happy. I come across heresy surprisingly often these days, I could say. I can tell him to go to the liege with this matter, but let's be honest, we know exactly why he's not doing anything. We will verify this rumor, Reverend Hieronymus, or I don't have time to be dealing with this. No, no, we can take on this task. We will verify this rumor, Reverend uh, Hieronymus. Hieronymus, rather. With great pleasure, Argenta puts her hand on the stock of her weapon. I almost wish for the rumors to be true. My heart yearns to battle some heretics. But, Argenta, that would mean you want her heretics to actually exist. Come on now. This is where I bid you goodbye, sister. Noble rogue trader. Is there more you wish to ask me about? I could ask him what he's doing on Footfall. Yeah, I'm curious. What are you doing on Footfall? What am I doing in this den of blasphemers, pagans, and the vilest of souls, you mean to say? Well... Footfall is the first and last stop in the Cronus Expanse. It is the point of arrival for those who have just started on their path, and it is also where those who are reaching its very end return, their souls wounded and bleeding. I embrace both the former and the latter, so that they may cast an honest eye over their sins. Furthermore, rumors from across the entire sector amass in Footfall. If I hear a crewman whispering about a reclaimed shrine world or expressing desire to carry the Emperor's light into the darkness among the stars, I help my flock in their sacred duty. Devoted trailblazers need assistance, both spiritual and material, tools, equipment, even garments and simple everyday items. Anything that might 
help pilgrims on their long journey and during the first days of the harsh frontier life is worth its weight in gold to us. May any help you offer to the effort of gathering such things be blessed. Ah, an opportunity perhaps? I bear another darker duty. The expanse is filled with the tainted creations of unholy heretics. These insidious objects are a danger to the soul, but I know what to do with them. Should you on your travels come upon dangerous corrupted objects, bring them to me, and the reward for your vigilance will be even more generous. The Drusian mission has much to share with the rogue trader. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now, is it true that the pirate Dens Bellardo was your parishioner? That he endowed the Drusians with donations? Again, I'm a little curious about all this money and the weird psychic activity that was happening at Bellardo's place as well, right? So, uh, I just want to just wanna see if, uh, if there's more information here. It is over the course of his life that reprobate has burdened his soul with many vile and egregious sins. His confessions were akin to a grand catechism listing humankind's eminent vices and enormities. It was all the more painful for him to realize that, of all the heinous acts he had committed, not one had been forgotten by the Emperor. Dens Bilardo was afraid of death and that which would await him after. He hoped to atone for his misdeeds, yearned to convince, if not the Emperor, then himself at least, that he had been more than a conscious speck of malignant mold his entire life. Does everyone deserve a chance at redemption? For I hope his soul now burns as bright as his victims did. To accept charity from a pirate and a murderer is unbecoming of a servant of the Emperor. Uh, it kind of lines up with how we behaved earlier. Or a sentimental old man trying to buy absolution from his tumultuous youth. How pathetic. No. I'll take the, uh, the darker tone, I think. I hope his soul now burns as bright as his victims did. Does that mean what I think it means? Burns isn't like burns in hell? I think so. I'm sure it does. Repentance but primes us for the salvific torment of the soul. It does not supplant it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'd like to take a look at what the followers of St. Drusus have to offer me. Indeed. Let me see my son. Dude's just a traitor. He's got some disciples' boots. We have some fancy boots as well, don't we? Adrenaline war boots. Would have given us extra initiative, which could have been quite uh, helpful during that battle. It worked out okay, but uh, that's something to consider. What else do we have here? Disciples, boots, fire grenades, imperial scrolls to give us plus five bonus to lore imperium tests specifically. Intoxicating elixir. Interesting. Toxic elixir. It'll give us dark physical power, but weaken our mind. That doesn't seem like something a holy man should be carrying. Plus 15 to strength, plus 15 to weapon skill, which is specifically for melee, but minus 20 to willpower for two turns. Interesting. Machine right set. We already picked some of that up. We got a medikit over here. Ooh, you know what? Maybe some medikits is not a bad idea. Yeah, sure. I'll grab all your medikits. I'll grab, uh, I'll grab all five. It'll cost us, what, 2.5 uh, profit factor? We can afford that. Some power mall, stun grenades, thunder hammers. All this additional stuff we can only get when we actually unlock our relations at a higher level. The Drusus Prime Pattern Shotgun looks like a fine piece of equipment. My goodness, can't afford it right now, but uh, eventually, eventually. We also have a Focus Melta Gun here. All right, can only do Focus Melta Scorching. Ah, can't be bothered with stuff that uh, we don't even have access to right now. So let's go ahead and yes, purchase all of this. I suppose we could sell some stuff. Uh, nothing really worth selling. Sure, deal. Pick all this up. Let's actually take a look at our inventory and make sure things are actually managed over here. Uh, we've got uh, Pascal over here able to carry the medikit. We can't because we don't have uh, um, the skill, I think. Is that the case? Or is it because we are... No, we're not topped up. All right, let's go ahead and hand some over to uh, Pascal. Let's not get too distracted by all that. Let's give Pascal another crack grenade as well. And uh, let me see, actually, who's got good ballistic skill? Because if I recall correctly, ballistic skill is what determines your ability to throw something. My goodness, everyone's pretty trash, actually, as far as uh, ballistic skill is concerned. Argenta, let's go ahead and give you some uh, some crack grenades and maybe a frag grenade as well. Get you properly equipped. And why don't we go ahead and give our lovely rogue trader over here these fancy adrenaline war boots. Extra initiative, plus 10% bonus to dodge. And uh, that only applies when wounds are lower than 50%. But let's get those on. We're not wearing anything else. And I suppose we can get some more medikits out there. Can we Can we stack them? No, we can't stack them. All right, fair enough. All good, all good. Abelord, sure. Let's go and give you one as well. And we can keep one in our back pocket, I suppose. Or, yeah, I suppose so. Or we can drop one over here. Just to have access to them uh, if push comes to shove and uh, we find ourselves getting a little roughed up. Good stuff. Okay, so... 
What does that actually mean for our next uh, task over here? Was it wanted on footfall? No, that's about J. Set that aside. Astray is what we're looking for, a companion quest for Argenta. Uh, she's asked for the Lord Captain's help with a personal matter. Yes, we're doing that. According to Reverend Hieronymus, a suspicious, sorry, suspicious individuals are conducting rituals in the Shadow Quarters in a place marked with a blue and gold sun. If they are heretics, they must be eradicated. The presence of Sister Argenta is highly advisable. Yes, of course, we will bring her uh, to the Shadow Quarters. Let's go ahead and make sure we're uh, moving in the right direction here uh, to get on out and head on over to uh, trouble that awaits. I, I think it might actually be... I mean, it's some form of uh, cultist. I'm excited to see uh, chaos represented in the game. But first, we must make our way over to the... Uh, what is it called? The Shadow Shadow Quarters? Shadow Quarters, yes. Let's head on over. And uh, let's go digging for uh, these heretics, though. Argenta interrupts us, gesturing for our attention. Rogue Trader, I would like to remind you about Reverend Hieronymus's request. He asked us to search for a potential cultist den in Footfall's Shadow Quarters. That's exactly why we're here, Argenta. Uh, remind me, what was it that uh, he wanted? No, you seem weighed down by something. You know Footfall better than me. Do you think the rumors are true? Well, we don't have time to talk. Let's keep moving. Well, hold on. You, you seem weighed down by something, Argenta. What's going on? What? No. Argenta shakes her head and rubs her temples tiredly. Apologies, rogue trader. Being here on Footfall is difficult for me. It's a minor personal weakness, but I'm as ready to fight as ever. It will have no effect on my combat skills. If something is troubling you, tell me. Perhaps I can help. Or I could say I would like to know what this personal weakness is. Members of my crew cannot have secrets from me. Oh, one's certainly more authoritarian, and uh, I think we need to be a bit more authoritarian. I'm trying to stick to my role as, as much of a softy as I can be sometimes. I would like to know what this personal weakness is. Members of my crew cannot have secrets from me. You're right. I will explain. It's about the circumstances of my arrival on Footfall. I wasn't born in the Coronis. I was sent here to be a guardian of a reliquary on footfall, but my ship became caught in a warp anomaly and, although it lasted only days for those on board, decades had flown by in real space. When at last I arrived on footfall, it felt like I had been erased from time. No one was waiting for me on this side of the maw. The people who were supposed to greet me, who knew about my imminent arrival, had died. The reliquary that should have been mine to safeguard had instead been taken under the protection of Reverend Hieronymus and his brethren. They were more than up to the task. They had no need of my help. Footfall became my cage. I didn't know who I was or what purpose I had here. The way back to Calixus seemed like another trap. Even if I were to find a ship headed there, my sector, my order, they too would have lived decades without me by that point. Whenever I'm reminded of those months spent on Footfall, it feels like I'm falling into a pit. I hope the rumors of cultists turn out to be true. I cannot wait to prove with my bolter that... that, that the world and the Imperium need me. Jeez, that's, uh... I understand where she's coming from, my goodness. So again, the warp works in mysterious ways, and one of those mysterious ways is uh, it can really dilate time, right? But, uh, look... You know Footfall better than me. Let's make her feel useful, right? Just because I'm a commissar and I, I shoot deserters in the back of the head doesn't mean I don't also know how to encourage my people. I am a leader, and that requires encouragement from time to time. So, come on, you know Footfall better than me. Do you think the rumors of heretics are true? I encourage her a little bit. There was a time when I'd have said it was likely a fabrication. One can say many things about the Kespele Commission on, and their shady operators on Footfall, but even those thugs are loyal to the Emperor and so they mercilessly exterminate outright heretics in their territory. But now, heretics have launched an open attack on a rogue trader's ship. A member of your dynasty, Conrad Voigtvier, has turned out to be one of them, and Footfall itself is sinking deeper and deeper into madness. In these times of strife, I'm willing to believe in heretics who openly perform their dark rituals and brazenly mark their dens with sacrilegious symbols. Very well, um, we don't have time for talk then. Let's keep moving. And did I actually miss this previously? Was this icon always here? This little symbol? Perhaps telling us where exactly to go? I'm not sure. I, I feel like I would have noticed that previously. Yeah, come on. That that is very shiny. That is very shiny. Now that's got two. That's got one. I think it's pointing in the various directions we can take to approach our uh, our enemies here. I'm trying to find another uh, example of the symbol. I don't see one. So fine. Let's let's move up to to what we do see. And, and take it from there. Where are we? Down over here? Let's go. Really 
awareness checks succeeded. Is that what's showing us? Yes, the symbols, which we can actually interact with. Oh, hello. There it is. And that's Cassia's awareness uh, check succeeding. All right. What does this tell us? Rising sun symbol seems oddly repulsive, even sinister. Folks, I think this is it. I think this is it. Let's, uh... Do we top up Argenta's health? She's close enough to topped up. I think she's fine. I think we're okay to go in. Let's, uh... Yeah. Let's go for it. This fake door looks incredibly suspicious. Okay. No surprise there. Can we not actually open it? This is just, uh, writings about, uh, about me, I think. Yeah, yeah. Back at his cargo. Oh, we can't. Alright, fine. Leave it be. Okay, okay, so this door is fake. Do we come around this way? Are these workers suspicious as well? Ooh, yes, yes. Here's another symbol. Let's keep moving. And? You think a rogue trader is going to run to the leash to report that we're wasting bullets on target practice? Where is this conversation happening? Can't even, can't even tell. Alright, let's move on down. I think that arrow is telling us, yeah, where to go. Moving on down over here. Over. Ooh, up over here. Or, or, or down these stairs. Another awareness check succeeded. I think it's just this. So down this way. There's another uh, symbol down there. And that's pointing in two directions. I saw a rat the other day. Big fat one. Wish I'd caught it. Oh, he's talking about food, not Skaven. Crossing, uh... Crossing wires there between fantasy battles and, uh, and, and 40k. What does this say? Same thing, I assume. If I can even select it. Yes. Rising sun symbol. Yeah. Oddly repulsive, even sinister. Nothing else over here. Oh, let's keep creeping on up this way. Well, people know best, surely. But I don't think we're that doomed. I mean, a rat's got to be a good omen, surely. Oh, okay, they're just talking about the food shortage. Keep creeping up this way. Oh, hello. That uh, successful awareness check, I think, has pointed out... Is that a trap? Or, no, that's just the reflection from this light over here. But there's the dark hideout. Wait, no, hang on. That can't be the same thing. Yeah, it can't be the same thing. We, we've already taken care of the dark hideout. Hang on a second. <laughs> no way, no way, no way. Move across the bridge this way. Got a herald over here. Ah, yeah, here we go. Another successful awareness check. Same symbol over here. Same uh, warning. Head on down this way. These guys got rations and stuff. Do I see another symbol anywhere? Another secret door somewhere, perhaps. Oh, here we go. Rogue Trader awareness check succeeded. I mean... How can you miss this? What, what are you actually spotting? <laughs> what are you actually seeing? We got uh, what, some shrines over here. Oh, there we go. Are we going to end up at that uh, trapped location? Oh, hello. Wait, we're back at the beginning, aren't we? No. No, we're not. Yeah, yeah we're, we're... Deep in with two successful awareness checks there. I believe there was the warehouse access over here or something, right? Just trying to reorient myself. Yeah, this is where the trap uh, was, if I recall correctly. But I thought I saw a door over here. Marked with uh, a strange blue and gold symbol. Let's head on in. Unknown key. Now, I don't know if that's uh, the alpha version of the game glitching out or if that's uh, an actual, uh, you know intentional uh, visual but let's dive on in like I said sure I will fine collect it all right all right folks what do we have here doesn't seem too suspicious outside of a very uh you know ominous number I suppose some goods to pick up right off the bat what are we up against over here some cargo keep on creeping up oh spotted a trap over here where are we? Up over there. That's the demolition skill. Can we actually get to it without triggering the trap? Maybe. Let's go for it. Unpause. Oh! That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage to Adira. About uh, 11, right? Okay, fair enough. Failed that check. Yet another trap. Oh, this is a, this is a very, very uh, dangerous place. I wonder if I can just, like, skirt around it as opposed to trying to, uh, uh actually dis, dis uh, like, disable them. Like, disarm them. Let's try it. Come on. 
Come on. Oh! Another three damage. I really should just walk around them, shouldn't I? Adira's in a lot of trouble. Fortunately, Adira is also our sniper, so she tends to stay back, right? And, and, and relatively safe. Outside of when we're trying to use her lightning arc. More goods to pick up over here, it seems. Go for it. Yeah, pack his cargo. Number 15. New challenge for me. What do we have going on over here? I can see, like, a little bit back over there, but how do I actually get there? How do I actually get there? Oh, perhaps we need to pull back and go over something? Thought I saw... Yeah, there's definitely places to go. Oh, here we go. This is a door. Very sneaky. Very sneaky. Let's pop that open. What do we have here? Oh, no. Oh, they're up to something. Open the door for us. Guide our way. Twist our way. The edge of daybreak. The edge of daybreak. What are they summoning? Ooh. Zinch is right, baby. Now, obviously, that's not Zinch itself, but... Uh, you get what I mean. In comes Argenta. Popping shots right away. Oh, damn. All right, that pink core is going to be trouble, I'm sure. Already causing... Wow. A lot of damage. In comes this cultist sorcerer. We've got, what else? A couple of cultists. Cultist leader. And the sorcerer is popping a warp shield and twisting path. Looks as though we succeeded all of our resistances there. Good stuff. A couple of shots on Argenta as well now. Another twisting path coming here. Oh, this is, this is going to be scary as far as uh, the warp is concerned. It's going to get very thin, I'm sure, uh, the, 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 the space between uh, the Immaterium and real space as we take on, yes, a bunch of cultists, as I was saying, a cultist sorcerer, and a pink horror. My goodness, I was not expecting this uh, so soon. I just thought it was going to be a couple of cultists, but uh, cool, we got a pink horror on the field, folks. Going to be a very interesting engagement next session as Idira is in a lot of trouble and everybody else is taking a touch of her as well, more or less. This is going to be uh, is going to be a rough one, I think. But we'll be kicking off next session with a fresh battle with a fresh kind of enemy. I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Again, the alpha has a lot going on and uh, it's really cool to see so much already in the game. I thought we were much further away from release, but uh, I mean, this is a... This is a, a lot of unit variety and stuff that we're seeing, and, and I was expecting a lot of sameness throughout the alpha, so very excited for this. But again, like I said, folks, this battle and more will have to wait until next time. If you enjoyed this session, don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And as always, of course, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.